I'm continuing our conversation about logarithms and natural logs. In the last video, we were talking about what they are, how they work here, right? We were talking about some examples of how to work with them. But I thought it would be, and by the way, this awesome meme, forever alone, because a log base E is natural log. Um, but what I want to do is give you some examples, because a lot of students, I don't think, are convinced that this is useful. But there's lots of log scales, so I really want to put this into practice for you. So why should you care? First of all, earthquakes. If you live in an area that's earthquake prone, which a lot of people do, I know uh, last summer my wife and I, our family, we were in uh, Bali, for example, and we felt a bunch of earthquakes there. I mean, earthquakes are very common in a lot of places in the world. Earthquake, earthquakes are on a logarithmic scale. That's because each uh, one point increase on this Richter scale, as we call it, is actually 10 times more. So that's actually logarithmic, which means like, you know, if you have something that's like, I don't know, an earthquake that's like uh, magnitude, uh, I don't know, let's say five. Um, then you have something that's, you know, something that's a magnitude six. Well, you'd think, oh, it's just one number more. But no, actually, each one number is 10 times more. So magnitude five earthquake compared to magnitude six, a six is 10 times more powerful than a five and so on. So, I mean, that's one example that maybe you actually live with right now, like where you live. At uh, decibels, while well, you're hearing me right now, you hear about decibels. It's really weird that we call it a DB. It's actually a decibel. So we use a little d and a big B. Uh, if ever you work with anything to do with sound, you're going to see these words decibels being used. That's another logarithmic scale. It can also be negative, by the way, but like something that's super quiet, that could be something like, uh, I don't know, maybe like 10 decibels or something like that. Now, something that's really, really loud, like an airplane, that could be like, I don't know, 120 decibels. You might think, oh, well, that, you know, that's just 110 times more. But no, 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 no. Remember, every one unit you go up is 10 times more. So 11 decibels is, remember, every one increase is 10 times. So 11 decibels is 10 times more powerful than 10 decibels. Well, how much more powerful is 120 then? You know, how many numbers that you have to go up? It's to the exponent of lots and lots and lots and lots of them. So like your airplane sound, for example, it's millions, billions, I was even thinking like gazillions time, you know, more. What I think is amazing, though, is that your ears can actually, you know, your ears handle it all. I mean, your ears can can deal with this for the most part, right? Obviously, if it's too much, then no. But I mean, I think your ears are actually kind of amazing. Whoops, not this, but this. So your ears can actually deal with that. Isn't that kind of crazy? Your ears can, you know, if you hear a pin drop, or if you can, you know, deal with an airplane, your ears can actually handle that difference. And it's it's not millions, it's not billions, it's, well, I like to call it gazillions of times louder. So that's why if you have a scale, think about this. If you have a scale that goes from, you know, one to a gazillion, good luck graphing that. Um, but that's why we use log scales. And you might be pleased to know, I don't know, it depends on how you feel about memes. I actually decided, you know what, I need to make a meme about this. I went to a meme generator and made one. So I used a Canadian, so Drake. I don't know if you've ever seen this meme right here, but I figured, you know what, I just made this one here for you. Very fresh meme, here it is. So scale from one to a gazillion? No, <laughs> and then log scale, like, yeah, there you go. And that's why we actually use this. I mean, graphs, for example, sometimes when things go up, this is called, uh, well, this People call this Moore's Law. This idea that the number of transistors or like, you know, the, the thinking capacity or the, the power of computer chips in a sense. Um, you can see, well, it's due to, it's related to processing power, but still. If you look at these numbers then 10,000, then 100,000, then a million, that's a much nicer way to draw this. Otherwise, this thing just sort of looks exponential because it is exponential. But I, I like doing things on a log scale like this so you can see the changes. So that's an, another example. In astronomy, we use magnitude. So we, well, there's different ways to do it. But uh, one way is to use these weird arbitrary scales called magnitudes. We have absolute magnitude. We have rel, um, apparent magnitudes. And we can use those to actually get something about distances. So let's do an example where we can put all this in practice. So what I'd like to do is show you about earthquakes. So when comparing two earthquakes, we can use the following. So we have this equation that governs how earthquakes work, at least how the Richter scale works. So M is the magnitude on a Richter scale. So that's what this is. I is the intensity. So when we're comparing two different earthquakes, 
Now, like I said, this might uh, have very real implications for you if you live somewhere that's earthquake prone. And actually, this example here that I that I made up here, uh, it looks very much like what an IB exam question could look like. But I use some real numbers here, so you'll see uh, it's a little bit scary uh, what happens here. But this is true. This is all true story stuff. So, let's say we have an earthquake A. It doesn't matter which one you call two and one, but we know that earthquake A is two thousand times stronger than B, and we know that B has a magnitude of five point eight. What's the magnitude of A? Let's see what to do. I think it's a good idea to rewrite this equation in our terms. It doesn't matter how you want to do it, but you may as well. You can make it A or B first. It actually doesn't matter. So let's just do M A minus M B. It could have been the other way around. Um, and we'll say log of. And let's see. It's uh, intensity A over intensity B. Just with the way I've named them like this. All right. What do we know? Let's do the substitution. So it's just that simple, hopefully. So earthquake B has a magnitude of 5.8. All right, well, I know that then that number there is 5.8, right? That's magnitude B. Whoops, that's just a bad letter. There we go. So I don't know magnitude of A. In fact, that's what I'm looking for. All right, that equals log of. Now, we don't necessarily know exactly what uh, intensity of A is or intensity of B, but I do know if A is 2,000 times stronger than B, then I know that the ratio of A over B is going to be 2,000. So that's one way to, that's a nice way to do it. You could technically, if you really want to be careful with it, you could technically say that's because um, A, I just guess uh, maybe you don't see that. Some people see it right away, some people don't. One way, I'm just thinking just now, maybe a way to explain it would be IA, they just told you IA is 2,000 times what IB is. Right? So that's so what you would do is you would put in 2,000 times IB here. That's what this is, over IB. And you would see then that the IBs would cancel out. Maybe that's more clear just to show you. Look, then you get 2,000. So let's actually do this. So I'll just put this, uh, I'll get MA by itself. Well, I just move my minus 5.8 to the right, so then I just get a log of 2,000. And then what do I do? I say plus 5.8. Let's do this then. So, God, my writing is really bad, isn't it? All right. So log of 2,000 plus 5.8. And what I'll do is I'll do this on my calculator, because you're allowed to use a calculator for this question. And let's figure this out. So I'll get out my trusty old calculator. I will say, give me a, I should have just done a new calculator page. Oh, well. Here we go. So we'll just do log. So I need my log button, which is right here. Uh, I'm not told the base, so I'm going to use a 10. Remember that trick? And then I do 2,000. And I get my answer, and I add that to 5.8. I end up with a magnitude of 9.1. So magnitude of A, this is a 9.1 magnitude earthquake. And by the way, what this number is, this is... This is huge. I mean, keep in mind, our earthquake B is already strong enough where, um, if you know about uh, Richter magnitudes, 5.8 is enough to actually start causing buildings to be damaged. So, like, you know, things inside your house are for sure breaking. Your house might actually be starting to break at this point. This is already really powerful. Well, 9.1, look at this, it's 2,000 times more powerful than that. And what is this? This is that, mag um, I don't know if you ever heard of it. I mean, it depends on where you live. You might have, your family certainly might have been affected by this. In 2004, there was a ridiculously huge earthquake um, in Indonesia that caused this horrible tsunami that, you know, killed so many people. Uh, but this right here was the magnitude of it. So just so you can see, one that already damages your house, that thing was 2,000 times more powerful. So that's actually, I mean, this is real. So be aware, earthquakes, obviously, they affect a lot of people. They can, you know, move things, they cause tsunamis, things like that. So this is a practical use of logs. But like I said, we've also got use in astronomy, we've got use in decibels, we've got, you know, saw some memes. So there you go. Enjoy. <laughs>